All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this animation right here. But before we do that, I want to give a quick shout out to a friend of mine. He just started a Blender channel. If you're into character animation, rigging, things like that, he just started a channel. It's called Southern Shoddy. Go give him some support. I'd love to see his channel blow up. So if you'd like to check him out, I'm going to leave his channel in the description. Before we get into it, if you want to download this exact scene file that you're seeing right here, it's available on Gumroad for a dollar. If you're already on the Patreon, you'll be getting that for free. So let's get into the tutorial. So to start off, we're just going to get a mesh here, plane, and I'm going to hit S8, just like that. I hit Control A and Apply Scape. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Tab, right click, and I'm going to subdivide it by, I believe, I'm going to do 30. That looks pretty good. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and displace it really quickly. So we'll go to Displace, New, go to the Textures. I'm going to add a Cloud, give the depth all the way down, and bring up the scale, to, the size to 2. So... Now we need to make our object. So just to give you guys the concept here, we're just going to add in a cylinder. And then I'm just going to make the radius pretty small right around there. And then the depth fairly high. So now we have this. We're going to bring them over here. I'm going to click on the plane here and go to this little box icon. And we're going to go to instancing and we're going to click faces. Now let's click this right here. Then hold down shift, click the plane, hit control P and click object. And when that happens, this you'll get this right here. Now I clicked I clicked the wrong thing in instancing. You need to click verts. Of course, in faces you get a completely different result. But we're gonna go with verts. So now that we have this, so you can click on the plane, click on the cylinder, and we'll bring it over and bring this back to the center here. So this is the basic idea. Now I'm gonna go back to none here and model quickly model this cylinder. So I'm gonna click on in, in uh, edit mode, we're going to click on loop cut at here, 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 and one. So we're going to do that right there. Now let's click on the faces. Now you don't have to do this exact design, but in case if you just want to follow what I'm doing, I'm going to hit click alt, click on the center here. I'm going to hit E, S, bring it in just like that. And the same thing here, alt, E, S, bring it in. And then on both of these, we are going to add a new material. So go out of edit mode, click new, and we're going to make this one metallic and a little bit darker. So let's go down to the darker end. And then let's add an emission material, emission shader here, and make that emission. Go back to edit mode, click on that new emission, click assign. And if we go to look dev, now that material is assigned to those two sections. And I'm going to give it a strength of 10, and we're going to make it kind of orange. All right. Now, let's go back to the uh, plane here. Go back to instancing and click on verts, and we're back. And if we go into view, look dev here, now we can see what we're working with. So let's go ahead and loop this. If you've seen a lot of my tutorials, you probably know what we're going to do next. So we're just going to add a circle here, and then we're also going to add a empty. Next, we're going to go into the constraints of the empty, add a constraint, follow path, in this target selection, hit the circle. On in down here, we're going to give it 120 frames. And then here in your edit preferences, right here on animation, make sure your interpolation, default interpolation, is on linear. So we'll go back to the empty, right click on offset, insert keyframe, and then go to the very end on 100, uh, frame 120, hit the right arrow to go to 121, and then type in 100 on the offset to get a perfect loop here. So now that that's happening, we're going to go over, click on here, go to the displacement, where it says local, switch it to, not global, sorry, object, and click your empty. Now if we press play, we get a really nice animation. Now what we can do here, we can start having some fun, is upping the strength. Let's go to look dev here. If you up the strength, you'll get some really cool stuff. I'm going to go to the EV render engine and st stop the bloom. So I'm just going to set up my camera now. So we're going to go to camera, control, alt, zero, and I'm just going to go with this. What I'm going to do here on my cylinder is add a bevel modifier. Right here, bevel it, give it segments of, say, three, right click, shade smooth. So we just get a better looking animation here for our modeling. So now that we have this, say I want to go up a little bit higher so I can see the top just like that. 
Now let's add some depth of field. So click on your camera, click on the little green camera icon and click depth of field. And we're gonna mess with the f-stop, go all the way down. Say you wanna make it focus on right there. So we're, now we're gonna press and mess with the focus distance and bring our f-stop down, just like that. And so now we have this really neat animation and it loops. All we need to do is add in an HDRI. So you can you can go to hdrihaven.com and go get some. I'm gonna go ahead and load in an HDRI of my own or you can just do some lighting. You don't actually specifically have to use an HDRI. So now I have my HDRI loaded in. I'm gonna go to the rendered view. It's gonna be slightly different with a new HDRI. And now we are playing with a pretty interesting animation. All I did here in the nodes for our, our cylinder here is I went back into the shading and we'll go to rendered, click on slot one for this material. I'm gonna add a bump node, plug that there, get a wave texture, go from bands to rings, plug that wave into the height. So now we're gonna add a texture coordinate right here and plug the object coordinate into the vector. So now they're going this way and then you can play with the scale here. And then I just added a color ramp right here and then I messed with the scale, I believe on the black portion, just like that. Now we have a little bit of fun. And then here on the shader, I just made it a little bit less rough, just like that to get some fun going on. And now we have this really awesome animation that you can render and get some really, really cool looking stuff. You can go in and optimize it and make it look better. Um, one thing I, I always say is go into the color management and it's changed to very high contrast and now you get an even better looking render. So just things like that will make your render look really nice and sharp. And there you go. That's how we did that animation. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.